This is my um, Livet controller. Um, I used to work, since I use Ableton for my live sets, um, I used to work with an APC40 at first, um, which I still like. It's, I think it's a great, it's a great um, controller, but it was far too big for, you know, for traveling and it has a lot of, um, a lot of just options that I don't use. It's, it's just too big. So I was, I was looking for a controller with, with a lot of knobs and I don't need a lot of launch pads, so this was kind of perfect for what I was looking for. I've never used turntables or CD chase, but my setup is still left and right, just, you know, two channels that I have in Ableton. So I trigger them on these two rows here, um, and then I just got a lot of basic effects that I like. I have um, for each channel, so let's just like say uh, this is all split in half pretty much, so if this is my left channel, this is where I have the, the lows. And then I like to have my, uh, my highs and mids together. I just find it easier to work with rather than splitting up the mids and highs. Um, this is uh, reverb. I got some uh, fade to gray, which I think is a really nice effect, especially for um, fading out stuff. Um, got another, what's here? That's a filter. And then here are sort of my, uh, uh, you know, um, return effects or send effects, I, sh I should say. I got reverb and delay um, and whatnot. Same on the other side. And then here just functions like scrolling through my actual window, um, stopping clips, triggering clips, etc., etc. Oh yeah, what I should say is I definitely play um, other, other people's stuff as well in my sets. I find if I only play my stuff, I just I get bored of it. <laughs> I sort of, I don't like only playing my stuff. And if I play that every night, I, I need to hear some other songs as I play. So I definitely, um, definitely play other people's stuff as well. Um, but try, try to have something that works cohesively with my, with my own stuff. I never DJ on the spot. It's something I, I don't enjoy at all. So I'm very sort of OCD with my preparation. Um, so like a simple set like this of just an hour, sometimes takes me up to like three days to prepare just because I like to find like the perfect songs that match with each other so it can take days just because I'm very like OCD with that stuff I, I have the full tracks but then I usually just find uh, you know I find parts um, that are good to sort of fade out the song and bring in a new one um, usually parts where there's no no kick um, I really like melodic mixes as well um, and at first I'd used to find songs by ear. I didn't even know there was like mixed in key as a program, <laughs> which like saves me a lot of time now. So I definitely, definitely sort of organize my, uh, my library with mixed in key now, which is nice. Everything's set up here. So the tempo good. So that one, I, um, I fade into one of my own tracks, Raw Cut. So I just, to bring in raw cut, I sort of like turn down the mids and highs a bit. Um, let's go to the end of this track here. I might like slowly filter out um, the whole song a bit too. Oh, hang on, where am I? Alright. Throwing a tiny bit of reverb towards the end. Start filtering a bit. Base of the old one. The bass is full, full on on the new track. And uh, the mids and highs of the old track are still going. Slowly bringing in like the, my own track here with the uh, mids and highs. And yeah, as you can hear, it's, it's definitely a lot of mix that matches in terms of harmony. I like to have like really long mixes and sort of keep the old, old song as long as I can. So it almost becomes like its own song for a bit, almost like a mashup. And I can just, you know, I can either like delay it out or I can just slowly fade out the, the mids and highs, which I'm doing now. So 
from now, like my new song starts. That's the way it works. I like to prepare for a concert and like know what I'm gonna do. So the whole DJ concept doesn't like make sense to, <laughs> to my brain. So I just work with work with how I feel comfortable and this setup works really well for me. So yeah, I mean, I like that means I'm practicing the transitions in beforehand just so they're like exactly how I want them to be. So in terms um, of that live show, I mean, in the future as a musician, will you be at, do you think you'll add actual live? Um, it's or? a possibility. I think, I think from just even from the, the way I produce, it's very like, I'm not like a, you know, like a jamming musician who's like, yeah, yeah, this is great. And then I like play drums, like, you know, that like Chili Gonzalez video where he just like um, puts a song together in like one minute. It's like a really sweet video, but that's not, that's not how I work. Like, it's very like, it's a lot of mouse based action that's going on. Like, <laughs> I like, even my drums, I, uh, I click, I click them in. I don't like, I don't like triggering them. Like I like to click them in and like, so it's very visual as well. Um, so no, I think just from, from the way I, I work, I don't think like me playing like live instruments would, would make a lot of sense, but it's definitely something I'm, I'm open to considering. But I think I'd rather, if I bring in a life aspect, I'd prefer to be like a, a band aspects, do something like Caribou or the field, I like how they have, have their live show set up. So they'll have like live drummers, maybe a bass player. And then I would just like trigger, trigger samples and whatnot. I mean, I'm still, I still haven't found my, my perfect sort of um, controller. I like my APC 40 because it was really, um, the buttons felt really nice and soft. Um, so triggering was a lot nicer on it, I found, but it just, it had, it was too big and it didn't have enough knobs for my taste so this is a really good um, compromise right now because in terms of how it, what it has it's perfect but it could feel a lot more like intuitive um, like the buttons could be like a little more like touch sensitive and whatnot um, but yeah no I'm pretty happy with this one